Hello and welcome to The Authority of Love. I'm your host, Greg Williams, and we're talking again today for the third day with Pastor Richard Gaines of Consolidated Baptist Church. Now, you can hear the, today's podcast and the previous two podcasts at WJMM.com. You can listen to it live today, or you can click on their podcast page and uh, find those previous ones. So because the responses from Pastor Gaines have been so good, I'm just going to jump right in, Pastor Gaines. So thank you for joining us again. Appreciate the invite. Uh, what are we doing well? We've talked about this and kind of set this up. What are we doing well? What do we need to work on when it comes to helping people become disciples and really make Christ Lord in their life? Well, Greg, I, I think the act of worship, Sunday morning, most churches do a good job with worship. Uh, that's oftentimes the first entry point for right. persons right. coming into a congregation yeah. is somebody invites them to come and worship. I think we do that pretty well. Mm -hmm. Once we get them in the front door, then the idea is to keep them from going out the back door. All of that. Or sitting stagnant. Yes. Right, yes. right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All of that we call discipleship. Yes. Uh, from getting them connected, uh, getting them plugged in, because you're, you, you know well that after five years, if persons are, are involved, 80% are still there. Mm -hmm. Conversely, if they're not involved, 80% are gone and no longer to be found. And so we have to create safe spaces for people, but we also have to set expectations. So often we allow people to come into the church and just sit. Mm -hmm. uh, if I work for UK Hospital or Toyota, I've got product updates, I've got new training coming mm -hmm. uh, just every so often. But in church, you can come and... Uh, in churchianity. Churchianity. You can come yeah, and, yeah, yes. and just kind of yeah. sit like a bump on a log. Yeah. Whereas disciples, I liken it to, to charcoal. Uh, one's on fire and touches another and sets on fire. Yeah. And after a while, you've got a hot fire. Uh, the skeet flavored chicken or pork making yeah. me hungry but yeah, I got you yeah, it, it, it all <laughs> works together yes, yeah. and so the church must be a warm place mm -hmm. uh, that literally is, is producing a fire of Christ if you will mm -hmm. spiritually speaking to set ablaze the hearts of people um, we have to be able to create an environment that's safe for families yeah. for children yeah. for youth for yeah. young adults for middle age and seniors, recognizing that their needs are varied. Right. You know, uh, safe places for men. Because mm -hmm. men mm -hmm. are not going to. Well, by the way, we're going to get to that later in the yeah, week. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, they're not right. going to open up anywhere to anybody. They need a yes. safe place. Yeah. Women are more talkative. But even in that, they need a safe place right. where that, that's safe and trustworthy for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that's part of the responsibility of discipleship is to create those safe spaces, right. be it small groups, be it a Sunday school class, right. or even in the worship service that, that allows them to freely worship right. in their own style. Right. Here at Consolidated, Greg, we have persons that uh, grew up Baptist, uh, some Methodist, some Episcopalian, mm -hmm. some Catholic, mm -hmm. varied denominations that have a myriad of beliefs that they bring with them. Mm -hmm. And so we have to create a safe space for them to examine what they've been taught right, uh, right. over against the scriptural, yeah. the scriptures. And, and that's not in line with just Consolidated Baptist Church. It is that, but even more so, it's examined it in line with the truth of God's Absolutely. word. Absolutely. We got to, that's what unites us and brings us together. Yes, the in word everything. of God. Right. And so let me say this, uh, and I think you'll agree with it, but I heard you talk about it, and I agree. We have to have those things, especially in today's culture. But that's the tip of the iceberg with discipleship because you talked about expectations. I'm going to use another word, yeah. accountability. Yes. So, so it's not just accountable to show up at that class uh -huh. or show up in that small group or show up for worship. What are we doing to help to develop and mature the disciples here at Consolidate or wherever that may be mm -hmm. that are then discipling others, not just in those classes or small groups? How is that working? What are we doing what, there? What I found, Greg, is that Persons that want to be involved and want to grow, you don't have to chase after. Right, right. Th they're, they're there. Yeah. And they're, they will mature more quickly too, right? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Because Most they the time, are, right. they're in the words of Tom and Tenney, they, they become God chasers. Yes. They're chasing after God. Yeah. 
It's easy to sing about. It's a bit more challenging to do in real life. Yes. Uh, that, that's one, one leg of that stool. Yes. Secondly, uh, there are persons who may be aware of the expectations, but we also must have some measures of accountability, right. as you stated. Right. Uh, expectation without inspection gets you disappointment. Yes. So yeah. we've got to set the expectation. And what I found, Greg, uh, is that if persons know the expectations, they're more apt to rise to meet them mm -hmm. than being in an atmosphere of no expectation. Right. People know when they come. Something is supposed to be different. They may not fully comprehend yeah, it. Our consciences even tell yes. us that according to the scripture. Something right. Right. is different. Something is expected. I'm not sure what that is yet, but, but I'm coming with an attitude of curiosity mm -hmm. because I'm yearning. My soul is yearning within me for something more. Right. And so we've got to meet that need and quench that need. And the only thing that's going to feel that is the word of God. Yeah. Uh, and then we must be willing to serve alongside those persons. Yes. Uh, it's not enough just to preach it, but I've got to put on my tennis shoes and my blue jeans and be willing to get down in the dirt with persons. Right. Because here's the other thing. Church ministry is messy work. Yes, it is. People like to think it's, <laughs> you know, pie in the sky, it's utopia. Yeah. It's, 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 babies make messes, uh -huh. regardless of their age. Yep. And whether I'm Five or 55, when I come to Christ, I'm a baby in Christ. That's right. Babies yeah. poop, babies burp, babies <laughs> do stuff. They break things, they do, yes. Yeah. yeah, because they don't know any better. Right. And right. so we have to be constantly aware yeah. of where people are in their maturity level yeah. and meet them where they are. That's the key, meet them where they are. Right, right. And, and recognize that, except for the grace of God, there go I, mm -hmm. and once upon a time, there was there I. There was I, yes. And so, yeah. And we don't, we meet them there, but we don't change the message because that same message, wherever they are and whatever their need is, will be the truth of, of, of the word you said. And I always say this, the written and the living word. Exactly. The written word, they hear it, they're pointed to the living word in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add another layer to this because it's messy. I had one pastor tell them we were talking about this. Man, Greg, those relationships are messy, nasty stuff. And I said, what part of messy, nasty stuff changes God's truth? We still have to get down in that mire because discipleships, disciples, I should say, are only made in loving relationships. Absolutely. And they don't, in a fallen world, in the old man and old woman, they don't happen well. Right. Naturally, we're selfish. So uh -huh. speak to the, the loving relationship part in, in what you've just shared about all that discipleship and the church and the messy stuff. Well, we literally have to develop a heart for God. And Amen. God's word is plain. His desire is none would be lost. We know some are going to be, but his desire is that none be lost. Right. And so if we have the heart of God in, our, in us, we don't want to see them lost. And our love for God translates into our love for them, mm -hmm. which is manifested through discipling them. Yeah. Meeting them where they are. Mm, yes. Recognizing that the strong have been called to bear the infirmities of the weak. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, just meeting them there in that time of yeah. need and weakness, uh, knowing it's, it could get messy. In the mess, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah but I'm yeah. not doing it for them, I'm doing it for That's Christ. That's right, beautiful. That's got to be beautiful. my driving motivation. Otherwise, I get tired and I quit. I got a quote in the book from Oswald Chambers that yeah. I just love, it's powerful. He says, and I'm not gonna give it exactly, but it's gonna be close. If our, if our service is for men, yeah. we will end up, they will treat us like dogs. Mm -hmm. And we will quit. But if, as Paul modeled for us, if our service, as you just said, is for God, we will serve no matter what no the cost. What. That's what we've been saying. And it points us to my, my last question, because it's going to take a little while. We might even flow over to tomorrow. Okay. But we're going back to the first and second greatest command. In the Greek, yeah. it's interesting, because the Greek didn't just say first and second to give you options. When it said first, it meant time, order, rank, and priority. In the Hebrew as well. Mm -hmm. So when, it said, when, when Jesus said the first and greatest is to worship God alone, hear, O Israel, yeah. worship him, which we leave out a lot of times, uh -huh. and then love him with all you are, yeah. it, it literally means you can't do the second one. You can't learn to love yourself and love others unless you first learn and begin to grow in, baby, to, yeah. to maturity, mm -hmm. in your love for God. 
Yeah. Speak to that and how we're doing and what we can do well, in our I, churches. I begin with the worship piece. This, this, this <clears throat> worship, we must understand, is more than an act, but it's a lifestyle. Amen. It's, it's Romans 12, too, right? Yeah, it's yep, continuous. Yep, living sacrifice. It's not just Sunday morning from 9 to 1030. Yeah. Worship is a lifestyle. How I treat my neighbor. How I treat even my enemy, or your spouse, or my or your spouse, children, yeah, yeah, yeah. my chip, whomever it is, yeah. that is a manifestation of my authentic worship of God. Yeah. Let me interject something: way more than the way you treat the people in the pew, exactly. right? Exactly. Right. Even though we want to do that as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Go I ahead. mean, yeah. when when I'm going to Walmart or Kroger and yeah. you pass the homeless guy on the corner there with yeah. with the, that's worship. How mm -hmm. I respond to him or her. That's part of my worship. That that's uh, that's authentically who I am. It's easy to worship in here. Yes. But in I don't where the rubber meets the road in the back alleys and the streets, that's where our authentic worship yeah. okay. is seen. And if you're not doing it there, it's probably just a facade here. Exactly. You can sing with all your heart, but if you're not living it, it's probably just a facade. Exactly. Now to go beyond that, <clears throat> when we talk about this worship piece, um we worship each Sunday for a reason. The scripture says, forsake not the gathering together themselves that you might uh, you know, edify, build up one another. I, I get that. Yes. But when it comes to building an intimate relationship with God, it takes time. Yes. If I just, if it would do well just to read one day a week, I, I'd read one day a week, but I yeah. know that I need more time with God than 30 minutes on a Sunday and that's it. Intentional effort yeah. is actually love. Ex ex right? Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and I'm not referring to time spent preparing a sermon. Yeah, good, good. I'm Thank you. I'm talking about time yes. with God, just you and me God. and God, yes. not preparing for something. Right. Um, discipling persons even is an act of worship. Yes, amen. Absolutely. I think we've compartmentalized so much of this, Greg, <laughs> yeah. that we can, we can, I'll work on this, but I'm okay with this. No. It, it's all in, yeah. all or nothing. It's all worship. Yeah. Whatever I do. If, if I'm the guy uh, uh, mopping the floor, that's worship. Yeah. If, if I'm the, 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 the person in the kitchen preparing the dinner, that's worship. Whatever I do, I do it to the glory of God. Yes. And that all of that is modeling discipleship. Yeah. Just yeah. as parents teach children, mature saints are to teach the younger sheep and lambs. Yes. By both precept and example, word yeah. and deed. Yeah. That's discipleship. It's interesting because you just tied together worship, hero Israel, Lord our guys one, love in, uh, of God, yeah. which drives everything else, which is really discipleship because if as you said if i am not living it over here then christ is not really lord of my life but this is a phrase you've heard if christ is not lord of all he's not lord at, at all, all. Yeah. so that's the thing i think we have to keep in mind in this whole thing of of discipleship and loving relationships uh join us again tomorrow we're going to pick up again with pastor Gaines on marriage and family in line with god's word and in christ's church Invite family, friends, and enemies, as we say. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for Bill Reeser and Encounter. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.